this section with the next jubilee, 2017 AD. Was that significant? Well, uh, the global scene, uh, most of the nations up until this point, wanted to see Israel gone. They weren't politically aligning with Israel at all. They were boycotting trade with Israel. They were doing all sorts of things to aid the uh, Arab nations to block, blockade Israel. And in fact, they refused to acknowledge that Jerusalem was the capital of Israel. Tel Aviv, up until this point, was the city in which most of the nation's embassies were situated, including the United States. And over a period of years, the uh, Congress had debated this issue time and time again. And time and time again, they let the decision lapse. No, we won't go uh, It's against international uh, policy. We'll be, uh, we'll be outcast if we recognize it. But in December 2017, Guess what? Donald Trump announced to the world that he was recognizing that Jerusalem was the capital of Israel and he was moving his embassy there forthwith. And when a jubilee year comes around, a trumpet is supposed to be sounded. What does the name Trump mean? The one who blows the trumpet. And I've said it. Well, that reading from Amos 9 would be a good point to finish there, but I'll let you do that at home. And you did hear Joan read it, that and never again will they be uprooted from their land. I uh, refer you to uh, the way then that we are to return from our exile. Let's face it, we're not in the Garden of Eden, and it's still a hope. Let's hang on to that hope but make sure that we know the way to that hope. It's no good ringing a phone number if you've got one or two of the numbers wrong. It's no good trying to get in touch with God if you don't know how to get in touch with God. And uh, we must know the way, the truth and the life as revealed to us in John 14. And it is by repentance. That Acts 3, 17 following passage is one of my favorite readings of the New Testament and the way is through repent, return and repent it says in Acts 3. Let's do that. Let's do it on a daily basis. As I said, sin will keep on pulling us down but we have to keep on resisting. We have to keep on seeking to return, to turn about and go the right way and to do that by repentance. And discipleship will be the evidence of that in your life. And I could write a book. In fact, I wrote a booklet a couple of years ago called uh, Gospel 101. And I started writing Discipleship 101, but uh, I have got sidetracked. Sorry. Uh, but I just include in your notes three areas that evidence your discipleship. That is Christ-centeredness. You can look up the references yourself. Christ-centeredness, gratitude to Him, and that will flow on to the people around you, being thankful, and generosity with what the Lord has blessed you with. In other words, God's people will be people who give tithes and offerings within the church and outside the church too. And there are good references there. While we're not under the law of the Old Testament where tithes at 10% of your income was prescribed, we are under grace in the New Testament and we are now asked to be generous givers to the work of the Lord in His church. So those three things for you to take home. And I conclude by just simply reading what I've got in my notes here. Joseph wasn't in fact forgotten, was he? God was with him in prison. I think there's a text there in that chapter that says that. God was with him. Our circumstances are the tools then that lead us to repentance and to fulfill his purposes in our life. That is to get us out of our exile. God is predetermining man's destiny, is yours in his hands for mercy or for judgment.
that's the question you must take home. Is God in your life for mercy or for judgment? God bless you in your answering that question. Amen.